pretty much. Oh, now recording. Now recording. Welcome. Hey, the the hey, Bill of our party. Now recording. I, I saw it. I see it. I see it, Hayden. Where do you get these? The depths of the internet. <laughs> Uh, dude, yep. so this one guy at church at ch a church class the other day, uh, he's like, class. yeah, it, it's it, institute. It's like a college level religion class. Uh -huh. Um, and so <laughs> you know when you fall asleep on YouTube and you wake up and you're like in the depths of YouTube, where like. You're watching how aliens fucked a dinosaur. Now this is how Jesus Christ became Hitler. Yes, actually, I know exactly more. what you're talking about. Yeah, and so you're, and so you're just like, no. what the hell am I watching? And I just remember like talking to my friend, and I'm like, all right, I'll be back. And then I come back like two minutes later after getting something, and he's playing this video of him doing Mr. Blue Sky that song, but it's like all variations of him singing it but like <laughs> super computerized i'm like what in the hell are we watching it's wild never trust mormon boys on their own play the depths of youtube for me just to end up being um soldiers returning home to their dogs <laughs> oh you're pretty wholesome bro like your YouTube's I don't, spot on. I don't necessarily start that way, but that's where I end up, and, and then I'm crying because their dogs are so happy. <laughs> <laughs> what are your depths of YouTube, Bill? Uh, well, mm. <laughs> mm, well, I have accidentally my way into a, into a couple of Rick rolls waking up, and that's actually what <laughs> nice. Of times I was like, God damn, is it the early 2000s? What the hell? I didn't know Rick Rolling was still a thing. And a uh, couple of times I actually wound up basically on exactly what you were talking about, Hayden. Like yeah. how how a the like how aliens made mermaids and that mermaids are like the pure species. It's like what the fuck? I had no idea we were talking about that uh, we were considering pseudoscience is real science but then again i'm all over tiktok i'm all on i'm on tiktok and youtube all the time i'm like who am i kidding they put and, pseudoscience in here all the time and one of the biggest arguments that we had the entire night like so big that the teacher had to come in and make sure like we weren't actually fighting because like it got pretty loud we were all arguing about what fallout 4 whether the institute is good or bad okay 18 videos back, according to my history, I watched British couple reacts to dogs welcoming soldiers home. Did you cry? <laughs> nah, they they reacted to some crappy dogs returning home videos. I think they, because there was no sad music playing or joyous music playing. <laughs> <laughs> my videos lately, I've been watching this channel called um, Oversimplified. Where they like talk about his. Well, actually, I've been watching this British couple reacting to that channel. I've yet to actually go to that channel because it's more interesting to me to hear British people react to American history than it is to just hear the history, even though the original video is pretty interesting. But yeah. Let's see here. I will not give the video that I'm enjoying credit. I will give the people watching it credit as, <laughs> as I listen to them react to the history that they have no, no idea about. It's also surprising how few British people know anything at all about this, the uh, American Revolution. They hid really? it from them. They don't know it anything vaguely know about it it's like their biggest l that they have ever taken yeah i think the way they see it except is, world war ii well i think the way they see it is because yeah. like everyone revolted against them all of their colonies are gone like all the countries that they owned have revolted against them so they probably are just like 
Well, they all seceded from them. We're the only one that had a successful military get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I guess that's true. I don't know. They probably are ashamed of it, and so they just don't teach it. True. <clears throat> you know, I've never said British and people in the same sentence because they're not. What? You you just said British and people in the same sentence. But they're not people, though. What are they? Then? Why are they not? They're just a tumor that needs to be removed from this earth. The original colonizers. The original colonizers. I don't know, because like sometimes I get into the British part of TikTok and I'm like, I hate this place. This place is the worst. I enjoy British people. I enjoy British people reacting to American products. Like, there's this one girl on TikTok. Yes. Someone sent her a bottle of Hidden Valley Ranch, and she was over the moon. She tried it, and she was like, Oh my god, this might be the greatest thing ever. You Hidden know that one guy on TikTok who's like, always has a bottle of ranch with him, and he's just like, he's quiet the entire time, but he's always just reacting to stuff? He's like some big dude. I don't. No, I don't know if I recognize that one. I haven't seen him in a long time. I don't actually have TikTok, so I, I don't know. It's a good thing. You should stay off it because it's a cesspool. Yeah, I'll just stick to watching my happy dog videos. <laughs> <laughs> nah, lately we've been watching it on... We would go to YouTube and we just uh, type in a bunch of uh, cat videos on TikTok and we're just sitting there like, God, look at these fucking assholes. I basically just watch um, anything by Ryan George. Uh, I'm now obsessed with Stephen He because his videos are hilarious. Um, I, I just have a few things that I watch. And then I watch other people watching them because I want to watch them again <laughs> and have someone to laugh with. It's sad. Oh, man. So I have this... Uh, I use use it used to be crippling, but I have a phobia of the dark and uh, and of uh, confined spaces and everything. So a while back, taking a bath. Okay. So a while back, I got that game Dead Space for the 360, <clears throat> and I probably spent five years trying to play it, never getting past the 30 minute mark on it until finally I just had to go onto YouTube. And play along with a with like this YouTube comedy player, and I was just like, "Okay, this makes it so much easier." <laughs> I'm so scared. Got to do what you got to do. Did you ever play Alan Wake? No, that 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 was was that that one with the where you had to shine the flashlight on the things to kill them, and you had to be careful of battery pat life and everything. Yeah, I never did beat that game. I wanted to, but Kelsey was getting freaked out watching me play it, and so I, you know, I stopped. Yeah, yeah. See, those games always got uh, always got a little weird for me because they'd be really stingy with the batteries. Oh yeah, the batteries you'd run out like crazy. It's like I didn't like, really, I didn't really in Fallout Four. Can y'all hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is everyone ready? Uh, just right. one second. I just got to feed my cats real fast. It's going to take like 30 seconds. I mean, we are starting like an hour late. It's all my fault, so I do apologize. He, he just grabs a handful of cat food and throws it at the cat's face. That's how <laughs> I can do it so fast. <laughs> just. <laughs> I can see him actually doing that, though. That's the funny thing. That would probably be an effective way to feed my dogs. They would just catch it out of the air. I mean, I'd probably do that to my kid if I had one. Just grab some food and throw it at him. Make sure it's wet food, too. And when my wife comes in to yell at me, be like, it was a kid. He threw it. Just gaslight my entire family. <laughs> Just gaslight all the rest of the hakies. Oh, yeah, I would. It's 
So, um, with Audacity, um, I can't record, like, on Discord with Craig. So, I'm turning voice to talk off. And I'm just going to try to be really quiet. Okay. Okay. And not fidget. What do you mean you can't? What do you mean you can't? Well, no. Um, so with Audacity, I can record the output from me talking and the input from you guys, but I can't record me and everybody through Discord. It comes through straight through from my mic to Audacity, no matter what I can do. So. Oh yeah, yeah. I tried. I couldn't figure out a way to do it. Yeah, that's why I've just been using OBS to record, and then. Putting it onto a, putting the audio onto Audacity, and also Craig. <laughs> what the hell did you send me? <laughs> uh, that's a good one, Bill. It's a good one. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. I did not have to look very hard. <laughs> Okay. So, are we ready to get to yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do it. All right. So, shit, I'm doing it again. Uh, so, welcome everyone to another episode of the Realms of Rothgar. Uh, I am your host and DM for the night, Frank. Uh, with me, I have Hayden. What up? Yep, and that he plays a Tigger. I do play a Tigger. He is quite the sticky paw boy. <clears throat> All right, and I also have Bill. What's up, y'all? I'm going to be playing <coughs> Dr. Valerie Anders. And, of course, we also have Ron. And Craig just failed to join. Well, because he's already joined with me. Fuck you, Craig. No, never mind. He he dropped out. Oh, damn it, Craig. Hello. He notified I am Ron, <laughs> and I'm playing Tarun. Okay. Um, and this evening now recording. And we've got Craig back apparently. Uh, this evening, uh, J Jaka J Jaden. Yes. Yeah, Jaden. Jaden. Uh, Jade will not be joining us tonight um, for reasons I don't know. Uh, did anybody? He's probably passed the hell out. He's currently oh. fighting a rebellion in the south. <clears throat> well, I'm not invited. We're going to continue on and assume that um, uh, Lard <sighs> shoot, what was his name? Lard you something. Right. Lard what was the last name? Lard was the first name. Lard Brimstone. Lard Brimstone. Uh, his narcolepsy is acted up, and uh, he's he just passed out for the moment. So, uh, if for those listening at home, and for the listeners or players here with me today, um, a recap of our last episode, uh, which was last week. Um uh, I'm sure everybody, I don't know if anybody listened to the, the audio I I sent out, but uh, I did not basically, have ability while work while working in Wood Forest. Hmm. Yeah, well, basically, his body. basically all that we did last time, um, we woke up, uh, we fiddled, farted around in the inn for a little while, um, we came out of the inn. After Lard Brimstone woke up and ate some egg from his out of his nostril, um, like not like out of the nostril, he just sucked it up and then ate it. Uh, I just listened to it this morning. I can't believe I can't. I'm having a hard time. Um, I could read my. 
Tigger peed on the floor of the um, inn. I can confirm that in my notes. Yep. I did piss in the corner. Jerry was mad, and so he gave everybody stale eggs. And everybody ate the stale eggs. Uh, not a whole lot happened last episode. Um, I know Dr. <clears throat> Valerie did have a conversation with a passerby. Um, I have Ron, do you have hands on that? that. Um, it says, so Valerie flags down an elf and converses in Elvish. Valerie, uh, my, oh, literally boo boosimo, Mr. Biggs. Elf goes white in the face. Mojam Abojali walks off. Valerie. <laughs> because I don't understand Elvish, so. Oh. Perfect. I love it. My headset died. Sorry. Yeah, so that happened. Um, then y'all collectively decided to go down to the docks um, to see if we can find the criminal element and try to gain uh, insight on the whereabouts of Mr. Big and or the mayor. Um, so y'all walk down there. Torun uh, located a possible uh, building with activity at um, and I'm sorry my head's not in it today um, my, my notes say um, we investigated the docks and found traffic towards a dilapidated dock I defeated Heisen in a persuasion where I rolled an 8 and he rolled a 1 he only has four intelligence. He has a dent in his forehead. I don't know what that means. Across from the street, from the third biggest house, also in the room is George, Molly, Kevin, and Casey might be there. They are supposed to steal from a dude who's meeting Mr. Biggs at noon. Torun has promised to hit Mr. Biggs for Heisen. A scuffle broke out. Tarun intimidated everybody into not hurting Heisen, who passed out from fear. And Tarun was, wasn't was super interested in fighting the people since they really didn't show any unwarranted aggression towards them, other than to throw some ineffective daggers. <laughs> and That's, that is the end of my notes. Didn't we hit like a, like a secret booby trap or something and like have to was wasn't is the building about to explode? Yeah. So basically, what happened is I got curious, too curious for my own good, and snuck and did a sneak back there. Saw him putting something in a bag, and then I wanted it. Failed some checks. He noticed me, and then fight broke out, and then most of them escaped underneath the bridge and lit a booby trap. And while they were running away, we saved our special needs friend who had the dent in his skull but then we healed it and he's gained some IQ points back and yeah the oh, building shit. did explode from TNT apparently they tried I forgot they tried to blow up Heisen yeah they did they left him to die oh yeah that's right I used my like 1 HP ability of healing or whatever <laughs> hold on I have lost audio Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Here's everybody. It's more of can I hear you? <laughs> but yeah. So um, all that happened. Um, at the end, uh, you were all kind of sitting around. Um, there was an explosion at the dock house. Uh, a gold coin hit Valerie in the back. Uh, so Valerie got to keep it. <laughs> um, Torun. Broke Heisen's skull to reset it um, so that it would heal back properly without the dent. Therein healing uh, some of his mentally handicappedness um, while also not being able to cure his brain damage. So he's still stupid, but he's not stupid because of brain damage. Oh, wait, hit. that's right. That's right. He was, I think it was, uh, I think it was Mr. Big uh, hit him Punch. so hard in the head it dented his skull. 
Yes, yes, that's that's exactly what happened. So that's that's the that's what happened last. Um, y'all do know now that Mr. Biggs um, stays across the street from the third largest house, um, and across the street and down a house from the largest house in the city. I thought it was There's across all... the street from the third largest house. Yes, across the street from the third largest house, and it's also across the street and down a house from the largest house. Ah, okay. And that, that's that's about the extent of, of y'all's knowledge uh, base. And we want to kill Mr. Biggs, right? Uh, so Mr. Biggs is basically um, the lead. Well, what you assume is the the uh, big bad for the town, the guy that's corrupting the the mayor and the mayor mayoral uh, cabinet. You, you do know from the hand of the king, um, who used to be the court jester, that the or since Mr. Bates come around, there's been a change in um, the mayor's attitude as well as the uh, cabinet has either died or fled or been banished from the town. And new cabinets, cabinet people have been put in place. So I think the consensus was that Mr. Biggs is the bad guy and we need to get rid of him and or the mayor. Um, right now, uh, Tarun's friend Ferul uh, is in the market square, has been for a day, and uh, let's say about a day. Um, he's got about two days left. Um, uh, noon of the second day from now um, is going to be the uh, day that the mayor is going to have Ferul's head chopped off. So, you're attempting to collect evidence in favor of releasing Ferul for a crime he did not commit which was the murder of Ferul's father. Um, even though Tarun um, and Ferul was stuck in the Coliseum together for that period of time, uh, the mayor uh, the mayor won't accept that as proof of innocence. So you need to find something to prove the innocence of Ferul and basically stop Mr. Biggs from continuing on with his devious plans. All right. I forgot about Ferul. <laughs> <laughs> I just forgot about my best friend that's about to be executed. He was one of the main reasons we started this quest. Yeah, Second me. Uh, I was stuck on the whole uh, Mr. Biggs is the, the slight owner guy. <clears throat> Mr. Biggs does own um, several children slaves. Um, just as a reminder... Uh, slavery is a thing in this world. Most often it's children or adults who can't support themselves for some particular reason and then sell themselves or ch their children into slavery um, to work off the debt of keeping them um, alive. Most cases, most in most cases, uh, the, the slaves are treated fairly. And it's kind of like a work release program. You work until your debt's paid off. But um, there, in the case of Mr. Biggs, he, we do have um, evidence of previous misconduct against the slaves, particularly Tina. I used to have a mouse named Tina. She was a good. Right. She was a good mouse. Go wild. But cow hated me. Cow would bite me. Oh. Little bastard. The building we're in is about to explode. It has already exploded. It, it's already exploded. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's been a day. It really has been. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I hello, Heisen. Heisen. I forgot you were even here. You, so yeah. Heisen, 
How did it make you feel when your friends tried to murder you? Uh, I'm, I'm not really happy about it, but, uh, you know, you, you guys are my new friends. You, you saved me. And, uh, yeah, I, we, we can be, I, I'm going to work for you guys now. Awesome. Now, you know where your friends might have run off to. Crew. So side note real quick. Um, when I originally created Heisen, um, I did create him to be a, an unintelligent person. So much so that I found a fun house rule that he basically had to roll and do anything other than walk and breathe. Um, <laughs> Right. So, what is his intelligence uh, for? His intelligence is for. Um, oh shit! I don't remember what his strength is. Um, I have since fully fleshed out his class, but I'd have to find it, and I had it that day, so I don't know where it's at. <clears throat> but so <laughs> yesterday, when we were having, or yesterday, um, last week when we were having the battle inside, um, Ron rolled a. Uh, what was it? Not a persuasion check, but a uh, intimidation check. Um, and instead of releasing um, Tigger, he basically released the Tigger. The, like he he rolled extremely poorly against that nat twenty. I, I, I really did. And, and it like so a nat one versus his nat twenty. <laughs> yeah, I think it was like a nat one or a nat three. I mean, because intimidation check basically as long as it's above your base, um, what is it, intelligence or whatever? Or you could roll against uh, it. Or how about intimidation checks? But anyways, um, so after the intimidation check, um, Heisen, I rolled for Heisen to, you know, respond and release him, and he rolled a nat one, and that's why he just fell over on top of Tigger and passed out. So, Yeah. Little side note, little side story. That's that's why Heisen's kind of the way he is. So I do apologize. So we I just imagine that Heisen is like is like one of the kindergartners from Recess. Me Viking. <laughs> <laughs> so we learned that this group is supposed to be stealing from someone who's meeting Mister Biggs at noon. Do we know? where that meeting is taking place. So, Heiser, so, did your friends no. say where they were meeting Mr. Big? Yeah. Wonderful. Where's that? Uh, it, uh, huh? <laughs> uh, I don't understand the question. Where were they going to uh, go see Mr. Big? <laughs> they they weren't going to see Mr. Big. They were going to know... steal from him, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where were they going well, to do that? So, th there's a guy that comes by like once a month uh, and delivers something to Mr. Big in a big old box. And he, he pulls up right outside Mr. Big's house and and goes inside and they chit chat and play Legos. That's not a thing. Um Lincoln <laughs> Logs or well, I don't know, whatever adults do when they're together. And then they come out and then Mr. Biggs takes the box and brings it inside and then the other guy he just kinda walks off. Can you take us to Mr. Big's house? Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, take us to Mr. Big's house. Okay. And so he just starts walking off. Oh, follow uh, the leader. Let's follow him. So, I mean, he will take you right up to Mr. Big's door. If if that, I mean, because I'm pretty sure that's how he would interpret it, the, the uh, request. So he is walking down the street. Um, he kind of cuts around a corner and walks a good ways. Um, y'all, y'all kind of start noticing the the houses in, in the area start becoming a little nicer. You know, a few less shingles here or there missing from the the rooftops. Um, even the shop windows look a little cleaner, and the shops look a little better that you pass. Um, then you go into a uh, more residential district. 
um, even more high end than uh, what we were walking through previously. And in that, there is one relatively nice big main road um, that kind of goes across um, the eastern side of the town. And it's basically one big long road, a lot of big houses on this. Um, and it's kind of a little bit of a gated community type thing. So you walk up, there's some guards standing, there's a little archway. Um, it's, it's a clear divide between the main parts of the city and this little residential-ish looking area. Um, and so uh, uh, Heisen continues to walk up and then the guards stop him. Um, and he says a couple things to them, and then he keeps walking on. Do they stop us when we follow? Uh, do you do you just keep following them? Yep. I don't see any reason not to. Okay. Uh, so yeah, y'all y'all keep following, and um, the guards just kind of look at you oddly. Um, but they they don't bother you as you pass by, and um, huh. you know you come kind of cuts around the corner and walks up to um, a really big house and kind of looks up at it for a second. Is this his house? Uh, Mr. He, he is around. it Mr. Big's house? He, he turns around and looks at another house. Uh, and like turns around again and looks back at the house he's at. And he goes, I think this is it. Uh, Heisen, out of curiosity, what did you say to the guards? Well, they wanted to know what I was doing, so uh, I told them we're going to see Mr. Big. That's it? it yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, uh, it, that, that's been it, yeah. Does the, ha <clears throat> Does the house across the street from this one appear to be the third biggest house on the street? I mean, if you're perception check, I mean, yeah, I might be able to tell you. Okay. Can we all do that, or is that just Ron? Yeah, I mean, you're all welcome to. I'm not, you know, he's just the one that asked about it. <coughs> Dark. Perception. Nat 20! Alright, oh, yeah. so, uh, Dr. Valerie thinks we're at the right house. Um, Hayden and Ron, you glance around and realize you are standing in front of the smallest house on the street. Nowhere near any other large houses. <laughs> are, are you sure we're at the right house, Heisen? Uh, uh, Obviously we're at the right house. He led us right here. Yep, this is it. I'm going to go walk back to the guards and be like, hey, uh, we have an appointment with Mr. Biggs. <clears throat> Do you know where he lives? Um, One of the guards turns around, looks at you, and, and he kind of looks you up and down. And he's like, Mr. Biggs doesn't deal with your kind. Okay, that's extremely racist. Just because I'm a giant cat. N no, you... Maybe. Uh... You're fucking naked, dude. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not naked. I have clothes on. Do you want to see me naked? What are you, a perv? So you've pissed and shit yourself twice? <laughs> no, uh, I'm sorry. You pissed yourself twice and you shit yourself once and you're still wearing clothes. Okay. I assumed you were just walking around naked because like, you've been acting like a cat and I didn't think cats would wear clothes. So yeah, I, mean, that's I, I still want my armor bonus, so... Okay. I mean, we could say you've got that armor bonus with your fur. He has, yeah, if, he if has clothes on. Well, see, I was I was thinking he was nude, and so I was going to say it was but against... cats this. can't be nude if, if being hairy is just their thing. But you're humanoid, so you should still wear clothes, but I figured Hayden being Hayden, he'd probably be walking around naked. I like, mean, I mean, to, I mean, to you be know fair, what? To be fair, that's actually a screw this entire you, you know, you know what? I I am naked, but my genitals are shaved. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Does the stick retract in like normal cats do? Wait, like what? the berries hang. Does the, ber yeah. the berries hang out, but the stick retracts? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So back to you know my original statement. It's like it's like you're fucking new. You're fucking new, dude. He don't deal with nudists. Obviously, there's no law, or I'd be getting arrested right now by two big burly men. Uh, we're just told to keep anybody out that it's not supposed to be. I mean, Heisen's been here a couple times. Like, I, I just assumed he he's uh got some business. And, and you just yeah let let a poor man that you know isn't mentally all the way there wander around the streets confused and alone. How dare you? Yeah, pretty much. Wow, you're That's... an asshole. You do realize how much of an asshole you are. Bro, I'm I'm just doing my job. Like I stand yeah. here, I stop people that aren't supposed to go in. That's that's my job. Like we ain't got no town council what telling it, us, hey, we need to protect the mentally disabled people. Like that's not you, how that works. Wait, what is he guarding? With my twenty one, do I know what he's guarding? Literally just the entrance into this little area. Oh. Oh, he so he literally just keeps the riffraff out of the rich part. Exactly. Like there's there's probably like a guard or two up on the walls walking up and down, just making sure nobody gets into this richer area. Torun walks over, uh, seeing what's going on and stuff, and says, "Is is there anything we can do to get you to show us? Because Heisen clearly doesn't know." Oh yeah, it's like the third down from the left. They're down from the left. She looks that... and points at the indicated house. That one? Uh, the one that Heisen indicated? No, the one that he and that the guard indicated. Yeah, yeah, it's across the street from the like third biggest house in the in the little neighborhood. Okay, that that adds up. Heisen knows. He just rolled really poorly. God damn it. <laughs> okay. This, by, by the way, going forward, whenever we're going somewhere, Doctor's just going to be holding Heisen's hand because he's too fucking adorable. That or we could send Heisen off to go do something. and <laughs> Unless we want him as our pet, I mean. I could make a, a child leash for him. A backpack leash. I mean, he's got a strength of 19. He can lift things. He's a, he's a beefy boy. Yeah, but we've got Tarun for that. Yeah, true, but he's a cute, beefy boy. He's got more strength than me. I mean, that is true. He is. He is. He is so far so cute and so pure. All I'm saying is that anything happens to Heisen, riots in the street. <laughs> Understandable. <clears throat> All right. So yeah, the guard the guard points the house out, and and uh, Heisen's still standing in front of the the house. He's kind of waving at you guys, like, "Hey guys, it's it's over here. What you doing?" Tarun, uh, yeah, I come. Tarun <clears throat> goes um over to Heisen, and he's like, "Uh, thanks for showing us where it is. I guess you can go home now." Uh, oh, but, but, but my house blew up. You lived there in that place? Well, yeah. I, I mean, I, I used to have a nice house, but, uh, I, I got, I got bumped in the head by, by Mr. Big's fist and, uh, I, I kind of lost it. And so, I, I mean, the, the guys down at the, the dwarf, dwarf, the dwarf? <laughs> hmm. Wharf. That's the word. Wharf. Sorry. <clears throat> the the guys down at the wharf, they, they kind of took me in and, and you know, they made me the lookout, but uh, you know, they let me sleep there and they brought me food. And it, uh, it was, do you know where the Happy Drunk Tavern is? Uh, do you know where the bar is so that the big cow man runs? Uh... Yeah, he, totally. Okay, you know when, I, when I look into his eyes, 
you know how sometimes when you look into like someone's eyes and you don't see anything processing back there like when you can see like recognition yeah yes i understand what you're talking about did he just lie to me i guess that's an insight check (laughs) does he know or is he just like bullshitting right now and trying to get out of an awkward situation he totally thinks he knows where it's at but uh, you don't you don't see the light of recognition in his eyes no uh, Val, the do- uh, Valerie's going to turn to both y'all. And can I? Can I I'm going to go up to a gonna, guard, gonna and say, I'll be. She's going to say, "Can you fo- follow my follow my lead on this? I need to be intimidating in a moment, like, m- like true murder in your eyes." Okay. I can do that. Awesome. I have a plan. Tigger, I'll, I'll need your help too. So Valerie's going to grab Heisen's hand and walk over to the uh, to one of the guards. And she's going to walk up to him and say, I want you to take him to the Happy Drunk Tavern safely. And if anything happens to him, I swear to the Raven Queen and every other god, I will burn the city to the ground if he is harmed in any way. Okay, that's your cue. Uh, Tarun's eyes crackle with thun- with lightning. And she just stands behind them. And did not roll the <laughs> time. Well, well, you know what? I'm saying it. I'm saying I'm 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 the one saying it. So I'm going to roll it too. How did I roll a better intimidation than you? <laughs> I was expecting a nat rolled, one. He rolled really low. Because <laughs> he has a plus six. If it's an eleven, that means he got a uh, like five. No. Wow. Yeah, five. Four? Yeah, it wasn't very good. <laughs> Um, so with the 17, um, the guy kind of goes a little white in the face, maybe a little, yeah, a little white in the face. Um, he's like, yeah, yeah, I can take care of Heisen. Uh, I know, I, I know, I know him. And then Heisen looks at him. He's like, Kevin. And, and then, Kevin. And, um, so it's, it's been a while, but if you check Ron's notes, um, Ron, you want to check your notes as to who was all in the uh, exploded? Uh... Oh, this son of a bitch! Yeah, there was George, Molly, Kevin, and Casey. Yes. Kevin. So Heisen, Heisen, like grab, uh, like grabs uh, Kevin's hand, uh, and then <coughs> Kevin kind of like looks back and like starts walking off with him. So his his name's probably not actually Kevin, or it's the Kevin that tried to kill him. The doctor's just gonna shout behind him as they're walking away. Remember, unharmed or the city burns. Uh, he he picks up his pace a little bit, and and you hear Heisen like talking the entire way out. Kevin. Do you, yeah, I, I've met these people and they're really nice and, you know, they, they told me they're going to help take care of me and look, my, my bump in my head's gone. And... See you at the bar, see you at the bar, Heisen. He, he turns around and he's like, okay, and keeps walking off. And it, oh, oh, they tell me this really cool thing about swimming events because they're sure they Torun looks over at the other guard and is like, "What is his name actually, Kevin?" Uh, the guard or Heisen? The other guard that's that's there, the the one that didn't go with Heisen. The, oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. It's like, it's like uh, <clears throat> uh, I mean, yeah, as as long as I know him, he's been he's Kevin uh, Stinglefort. Well, I, I I guess they do know each other then. Um, okay, let's let's um let's go over here, and then Tarun's gonna walk away from the guard, and like try and get the other two to come with her. And assuming they do, she's like, "So what what what's our plan with Mister Biggs? Like, do you just want me to burst down the door?" Or or what what are we what are we doing? Yeah, it is just a little weird. Sorry, sorry guys, give me just one second. 
Uh, do these homes, like, I imagine he lives, like, in a mansion, so they probably have a cellar, um, right? Like, a basement of some sort? Um, uh, what? Where does that come from? Um, yeah, yeah, he's got a basement, or a yeah. cellar, with the exterior access. Uh, but it is in the garden, which is in the uh, semi-enclosed enclosed garden. It's like a half wall. I mean, I I could, prov I could uh, give a distraction by banging on the door and yelling that he releases my friend. And uh, while while you sneak around back or something, I mean, and and if if yelling works and he releases my friend, that's kind of what I wanted, apparently. Yeah, I was thinking because the seller would have access to the back and like come up to the from the bottom of the house that we could get up into. We could just. Get into that way. Was is he the same guy that I bought the shitty food from? Yes. Okay. Sorry, sorry about that. We just got some weird news, but we'll get take up care of that later. Um, the doctor was going to reach into her little the little hidden compartment in her boot, and just going to pull out some lock picks. I'm like, I could just pick the door. I mean, you could also just knock too. That's not well, we could just knock. What I'm—I mean, is, he doesn't—he doesn't actually know us. What I'm saying is, what's our plan? Like, are we gonna bust in there and kill him? Are we—are we trying to rob him? Are we? Yeah, like, what exactly are we yeah. doing with Mr. Biggs again? We're—I've well, got, we're got all of his all of his ledgers and information. I guess information. the town. I mean, I do have all of the ledgers and the information from his little lockbox. True. Okay, I real, was wrong. Real quick. Half wall. It's a full wall. Um, real quick. Uh, I'm just gonna. Do I need to make a roll just to kind of thumb through and try to find some useful information from that uh, ledger stuff that uh, we got from his lockbox? Uh, yeah. If you want to give me something. Uh, what do you want? Like an an int check, or do you want uh, something specific? Uh. You can give me an investigation. All right, I can do that. I mean, I'll in that. Nineteen. Maybe, maybe insight. I think investigation. Oh, you're rolling good. good. Don't say that. Uh, it'll, yeah. it'll it'll go back to normal. Um. So, I'd say as you're flipping through, uh, you do see a few names. Um. With um. Trader, uh, not trade tour, but trader next to it. Mm -hmm. Um, that notate, um, he de he hasn't actually had any firsthand uh, accounting with, but they do owe him money. Um, there's also a few options from a town over for a, a particular gems dealer that uh, was supposed to come pick up some um, illicit gems for from him as well. So you've got two options. There's the um, the, the trader um, that's from out of town that owes Mr. Big some money. There's also the gem, gems dealer. Um, he's also probably a, uh, what do you call it? The top people that like make jewelry. I'm sure they've got a, a jeweler, I guess. Um, but yeah, so he, he's a jeweler. He's supposed to come pick up some some jewels to, you know, jewel with. Does does everything seem kind of a, from what I'm looking at? Does it, everything seem like above the table? Oh no! Oh no! It it it, it all looks very very under the table, back alley, stab you in the back type stuff. Um, there might be a few accounts with like the local florist. Um. That's probably, you know, on the level. But 
for the majority of the accounting um, that you find, it's 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 all looks like it's under the table, behind closed doors, back alley deal type stuff. Okay, then we could just knock, and whenever and whenever he answers, we could just bring up the fact that we have some information on some of his business dealings that he might not want uh, going public. Or we can just straight up just go to the officials. Because we know who's on his payroll from the documents that we have. Right? That is true. But the officials work for him. And I think everyone knows it. That a is large, a good point. Large majority know it. That is a good point. What could he possibly have on this whole town that he'd be able to have all of the officials in his pocket? Clearly, there's something going, uh, something else going on other than what he's got listed here. I mean, this is you... probably the best time for inter interpersonal communication between the three of y'all. What what do you what are the rest what do you what do you two think? Should we try to take it to him or should we run the risk of running into an official that's already in his pocket? We can't guarantee that we have all the ledgers of everyone he's ever dealt with. And so... these none of these guarantee that it'll save my friend. And even if we do go up to him and threaten him with blackmail, that's basically the same thing as going to the authorities blinded. Well, we could take this information directly to the mayor. I doubt he could have a whole mayor in his pocket. Mm. Never mind. That was a stupid thing to say. <laughs> I mean, I tried to put a mayor in my pocket once. He was too big. I don't you can't steal close. whole people. You can't steal whole people. Well, you stole my heart. Get... Uh -oh. Okay. Aww. Mr. Big mm -hmm. hangs out with the mayor a lot. According to one of my notes. Yeah. It's true. He's basically part of the council here. You think they'd be happy to be rid of him? That's what I was thinking. We we could we could take him down. Uh, Tarun looks over at the at Mister Big's house. Does it look? Um, are there like guards? Or, like what's what? What do we see when we look at his house? Um. So you look over. It's um clearly a two story affair. Um, with a partially enclosed garden on the front. There's a, a double gate uh, leading up to the front door. There's a couple fountains on either side of the door. Um, it's uh, kind of spooky looking. It's not like super friendly. Um, it's painted kind of dark colors. It looks almost kind of dilapidated, um, but not overly so. Like, it, it's probably going through some renovations. Hmm. Does, out of curiosity, does this house seem like the kind of house that someone clearly with his level of influence and money would be, would be in? Well, it's definitely large enough, but you would assume a man of stature, or so much so that Mr. Big is supposed to have, would probably take one of the homes that is fully furnished um, and, you know, not in need of, of repairs, um, in which in this one does. Like, there's a broken out window here. You can see some cobwebs through one of the windows on the side of the house. Like, it looks like it needs some work. Hmm. And there's plenty of other uh, houses on the road that, you know, are, look completely oh. 
well done. And... The guards are lying to us. This house is a front, or Heisen was right all along, and it's the little house. I'm pretty sure the house is a front. <laughs> I feel like it has to be. But if we want to find out, instead of knocking, we could persuade, uh, just see if we can persuade the door, the back door to open. Take a quick look around, and if we don't find anything useful, assume that Heisen was right. You you do know from what Heisen told you earlier that there is supposed to be somebody coming around noon to deliver uh, something to Mr. Big. Oh, wait, that's right. That's true. We that's could it. wait and then follow Mr. Biggs. We could absolutely do that. You got some super stealthy boys, so, man. We have a super stealthy. Well, wait, Bill's stealthy, too. That's right. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's two super stealthy boys here. So, I mean, that is a completely plausible approach. Do you all just want to wait and see when his uh, business deal when his business deal gets here? Yeah, I'm down. All right, let's find a place to hide. Is there anywhere to hide? Uh, I mean, so it's a pretty clean street. Um, you know, the majority of houses are are well kept, and the lawns are well kept. Um, the one house on this road that doesn't seem well tended is Mister Biggs, or what you were pointed to as Mr. Big's home. Um, so there's not a lot of roughage or, you know, debris or boxes sitting around that you could hide behind easily. That being said, uh, if you give me a perception check, uh, and maybe an investigation check. We'll go with perception. Oh, well, well, I guess we'll go with investigation. Um, Tarun, as you, as you glance around it for a, a location to hide at, um, you notice that there's a house across the street and down a house, um, that looks vacant as well. Um, so much so that there's a, a sign on the, on the, on the front gate that says, um, uh, for sale by owner. <laughs> okay. I guess we could go hide in there. Um, or at least you can throw me in there since I'm not stealthy and just tell me when it's time to bust out. <laughs> My new model. All right. Then should all three of us hide in there or... Mm. And all three of us hide in there? Well, in the house? I mean, I should hide in the house. Hayden, you could probably hop up on the roof since you can climb stuff and then you can like get a, a good view of things. Yeah. Yeah, I could do that. Which one? The, the vacant house or Mr. Big's house? Right, the vacant house. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what about you, uh, 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 Dr. Mallory? I think it's a... I think I want to be a bit... a bit. I think I want to be hidden a bit closer by, just in case, so I can try to hear what they say. Are there any, like... Uh, with that uh, 14 perception I rolled, are there any, like, bushes or any other significant uh, significant shrubbery that I can hide, that I can hide so that I'm kind of kind of nearby like a so, little closer than say being inside of the house I, I do have a map for Mr. Big's house here and there is very little to no shrubbery outside at all hmm. what about on the roofs are there are there uh, like guards that appear to be like uh, on the upper sides um, it is a two-story Victorian-style home, um, very steep, slanted roofs. Uh, 
gargoyles and spires and things. Um, not a lot of place for guards to stand around. If, if say, I was to go up there, would I be able to be hidden from general view? You know, I'll say the two little front rooms are one story, and you could probably, if you give me a, uh, give me something for climbing and or hiding. All right. So, uh... A stealth, and then maybe a acrobatics. I could do acrobatics. You might, you might be able to blend in. Eleven for the acrobatics. And, <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> so you are barely able to get onto the roof, um, and then you hang from the gargoyle's mouth, kind of over the front of the the entryway. You are okay. not hidden. This is not going to work. I can still see you. <laughs> I, just, I just shout back. I just shout back at Tarun. No, you can't. You're <laughs> hanging from the gargoyle's mouth. You should go somewhere better. Damn it. Um. How could they? How could he? She see me. I'm trying to. I mean, I honestly don't have anything on on his his house that is a good hiding spot. I mean, so is it a cur? Is it like a flat roof or a slanted roof? Can he just lay down flat on top and you know? It, it's it's high peaked Victorian ish style or Gothic so style. Steep, so steep on that then. Steep on That's that. Not gonna work. Then. You could climb all the way up to the peak and hide on the other side of it. You don't have to climb all the way up. You can just climb all the way around. But it's a two-story endeavor, and so there's windows looking down. Um, fuck it. You know what? He's got bushes in front. You can hide in the bushes if you want. <laughs> to make I, life easy. I, I'm, I just, the doctor's just going to drop to drop back to the crown. Fuck it. I'm just going to hide in the fucking bushes. <laughs> <laughs> With an 18, I roll into the bushes like Solid Snake. <laughs> Wow. You did really well on that one. <laughs> Alright, now let's All right. see how I do hiding in this and, house. And by the way, and by the way Dr. A <laughs> well, I'm not hiding Dr. Anders is as pouting. The street. You can just see me standing at the window and the sun is reflecting off my armor. We are just a group of stealthy boys, aren't we? <laughs> and I want to go ahead and uh, try my my stealth do, up do on it. the roof. Oh, what the shit! Super stealth. Super stealth boy. So. To be fair, I think the 16 is your main role. You got an 8 plus an 8, but you do yeah. get a net 20 plus an 8, but you do not have advantage. That's okay. I still get a 16. You got a 16. <laughs> All right. Um, so you uh, climb up onto the roof. Um, I'm guessing Ron went inside of the abandoned building. Is that right? I'm inside the abandoned building, but I'm clearly standing right in the window. <laughs> Okay. Staring in the um, direction of Mr. Big's house. So a lot of the the majority of homes um on on the street are hold on if I can get y'all over here. Um look something like this. The majority of the homes look something similar to this. Um the Ooh. abandoned yeah, so to get inside you'd have to go in through here. And then kind of around into here. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, that that's right. fine. There's a, there is a door right here you could have gone into. Or even a door right here you could have gone into. Yeah. Or, so even, you're... or even some fountains out front that you could have just, you know, like alligatored into. Okay, so you're in this this building here, I'm assuming. Um, did you go in through the front doors or did you just take this little side passage? I would prefer to say the side passage, but on a six stealth, I probably just went in through the front door. 
All right, as you went in through the front door, um, you got a whiff of decay. Um, and there's some flies buzzing. Do you continue to go and hide over here? Nothing I haven't had to deal with before. Okay, so you just go in there. Yeah. Um, and, uh, Tigger, you're just going to climb up the outside of the building? Uh, are you looking in the windows, or you just climb up the outside and just kind of I guess I'll look in the windows, why not? Uh, so you see not much, a whole lot of cobwebs, furniture covered in cloth. Um, depending on where you're clawing, climbing over the top of this building, um, it's all a lot of the same. Um, until you get to the second story hexagon-ish at the top. Um, and instead of this green thing here, there's actually just a red pool right here that kind of extends out about uh, eight feet in every direction. Do I see anything, though? Uh, no, just the red pool on the ground. The red pool? Yeah, there's a, a pool of, of a deep maroon color. It's not an actual pool, it's like a puddle. Uh -huh. But it's a large puddle. Is there a way I can get inside? Uh, yeah. If you uh, want to try to jimmy a window or something. Sure. All right. Give me something or jimmy the window. At this point, it's probably sometime around like 1130. So you'll still have roughly about 30 minutes before the guy gets there. Is it 14 open the window? <clears throat> um... Yeah, yeah, you get the window popped open. Um, and as you do so, um, some, some flies kind of buzz out. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's a murder house. How do you feel about this place? Well, this, uh, this is not Mr. Big's house, right? No, this is the house no. across the street from Mr. Big's house. All right, well, do we I guess I'll start exploring around inside the house if I know I have some time. And Dr. Valerie is just going to stay in the bush. Yeah, I'm just I'm just uh, like like a like a moody t like a moody high school teenager just pouting in there like fucking how did they fucking see me? Uh so Valerie you do see um a couple guards kind of walk down the streets. Um they pass by uh they kind of like look at Mr. Big's house as they pass by and they just keep on walking. And uh, they kind of around the corner and disappear, and that's about all you see. Um, Tigger, you you duck inside the window. Um, do you just kind of drop to the ground, or do you just stay on the walls? I, I am a cat with claws. I am on the walls and the ceiling. So if someone enters the house, I will like lean down and be in their face from the ceiling. Let's okay. be honest. You're on like, the curtains. Oh yeah, ripping that <laughs> shit to shreds. Um, so there's definitely a very bad smell in the air. Um, being as you've been in some bad situations, you can tell it's probably the smell of death. Um, and from the, 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 how pungent it is, it seems like it's probably multiple dead things. Um, yeah, that's about all you see. A big pool in the center and there's, you know, kind of white cloth on table and stuff. What? Jesus Christ, what room am I in? Uh, this one up here. That one? With the giant pentagram-ish type thing? That's not there. Oh. That's that's in Mr. Big's house, actually. But I don't have a version of this house without that thing there. Now it's too lazy to fix it. Okay. So I'm in a room just like this, though? Yes. Most of the houses are kind of laid out in the same. Some of them are just larger with a couple extra bedrooms on the ground floor. I see this door, I assume. Mm hmm Can I open it? There's a door there. There's a door there. There's a door well, right here. I want to open this door. Yeah, yeah, you're more than welcome to. All right. I guess I'll check for the baby traps, I though. I guess, though. Okay. Uh, I guess that will be a investigation. You do not find any traps. All right, I open the door. I'm super confident. All right, you see another door. Oh, I check for 
can I roll again for booby traps or do I yeah, totally. stick with that for? No, you, you can keep looking. Just I mean, you're not gonna you're not gonna check one door and then assume all God doors. God, shit! You do not see any booby traps. All right, I open the second door. All right, you see a uh, spiral staircase. Uh, one going up towards what you'd assume is the top of the tower, and the other going down uh, the building. I see this door. I drew a Gamma World card, and I found a leaky fusion rifle in this room. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there is definitely a door there. Can we keep that? Okay, I'll, I'll open up that door. I'm done for checking for booby traps. All right, you open the door. You see a hallway with some windows. Um, oh, can I there, look out the window there is, and see what I see? There is some red trails on the ground, uh, which I should have mentioned whenever you walk through here. There's some red trails all the way back to the the red pool over there. Wait, what? So there's a big red pool right here in the center of this room. Uh -huh. It's not a pool, it's more like a puddle, but it's a big maroon puddle. Um, and a really bad smell of death coming from this room. Um, and there's a red smear trail. Here, let me just draw it out. It's kind of a red smear trail. Kind of like that. I guess I follow the smear trail. Okay. So you come to the door. And you want to just open it too? Sure. Okay, you open the door. Um, in front of you is uh, a table with a book uh, laid open. Um, and several dead bodies scattered kind of across the mm. ground. Um, what does the book say that it's open to? Uh, what languages can you read? I can read Common and Infernal. Ah, okay. So, um, it says uh, a few things uh, in Infernal uh, along the lines of um, the the Cleansing is going well. Um, more bodies are needed. Uh, the last was not enough. Uh, there, the uh, plan should come to fruition soon. Um, the council is now mine. Uh, some mad ramblings, uh, and that's about it. Hayden, I think we we might be in Mister Big's house. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Um, so I have a forgery kit. Can I copy down? Well, no. Mm, I don't need to copy that down. I'm just going to take the book. Okay. Right, you take the book. You yep. just uh, add it to your inventory. It's a, a infernal book of mad ramblings. Written in human blood. Volume 2. Well, I have to find volume 1 now. I'm just still outside, pouting in the bushes. I got no idea what's right. going on inside there. I'm going to check the bodies, see kind of what the cleansing means. How long until noon is it? Um, so I'd say it's probably been maybe like 10 to 15 minutes now. Uh, probably have maybe another 10 to 15 minutes in total before mm. uh, the guy is supposed to show up to oh, uh, collect. Because okay. I was like, if we've got like four hours or something, I'm not just going to stand here. <laughs> Well, I mean, you can you can walk around. You 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 have time. And you assume this is an abandoned building. Well, I mean, if I know that it's almost noon, I'm not going to leave the window. I'm watching for this guy. That's true. So I guess unless there's anything interesting in the room that I'm in, I'm just going to stay here at the window. Wait, you want to give me an investigation? Yeah. Well, um, this is a what appears to be a small stable uh, meant for maybe a, a coach and a horse. Um, there is definitely a bad smell around it, and on the other side of the coach, you, you do find a dead horse. 
poor beast. And, and not like recently slaughtered this thing is emaciated like it starved to death. Such a waste of good horse flesh. Just the way he said flesh, man. Oh, Tigger, no, yeah. God damn it, Hayden. You're supposed to be a Mormon. They refer to it that way even when they're alive. <laughs> Tigger, oh. um, as, as you investigate the bodies, you realize that um, there is uh, several adults and uh, two childs. Two children. Um, most Tigger, of the... quick, look, are there any childs in that in the house? Any t <laughs> I'm sorry, Frank. I couldn't help it. <laughs> plural, um, plural children, or pl plural childish children, not childs. Well, I mean, I guess childs does actually kind of work in some situations. But anyways, um, as you, they're all kind of face down. They all look like they've crawled into this room uh, individually. Um. Most of them, if you flip them over, because most of them are face down, uh, have their entrails hanging down um, to about where their feet are. And, uh, you know, some of them look like they've caught on the floorboards and stuff and been torn off. Um, they appear to be missing, if you want to dig deeply, uh, some internal organs. Um, their tongue has been cut out. Um, as well as their eyes not gouged out, but stabbed with some sort of star-like implement. Mm. They're all also naked. Just like me. This town really doesn't like nudists. Really doesn't like <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't end up in here. But yeah. So their mm. tongues are cut out and their eyes are cut out? Uh, tongues are cut out, eyes have been stabbed with some sort of star-like implement. Um, well, actually, let me rephrase that. Um, they look like they've been branded out with some sort of star-like implement. Um, there's like no tools in the room or anything like that? Nothing no. else in the room of notice? No. All right, I see that there's two more doors. Of notice. Um, so there's the desk, or sorry, table that the the, the book was on. Um, mm -hmm. There's the dead bodies. There is two other doors in this uh, room. What's in the rest of the desk, if I... Um, it's just a table. Uh, here oh. next to it. Okay. There's a, some writing implements, or a, you know, a quill and some ink. Um sitting abandoned, you know, on the corner of it. And there's another bottle. Of check out this door. All right, you open it, and um, it's just, you know, looks like an ordinary broom closet. Um, there's a, a, a bucket or a, a box sitting on the ground there um, with some cleaning supplies. Well, they really did not clean up this mess over here. Um, nothing else in there? Uh, no, nothing much. Just, you know, some cleaning supplies. Right, I'll open up that door. Um, all right, so you open the door, and yeah, immediately a bunch of flies come buzzing out of that room. Mm -hmm. um, there is a uh, white circular carpet on the ground, and there is a naked woman uh, with spikes through her hands and feet. Um, spread eagle on the ground. Uh, her, or her organs seem to have been taken out and cataloged and placed around her almost like in a sp specific pattern. I'm going to quickly skim through the... I'm going to leave the door open. There's about a minutes before uh the the, sh the shipment comes in yeah i'm gonna go up on the roof continue with that and then while i'm waiting skim through the book reading to see if there's any hint of 
the cleansing or what I just saw, essentially. Um, so you just climb out the window from there. I mean, there's uh, not much else in the room. Uh, there's like a table and some chairs. Yeah, no, uh, I, I'll go back out the way that I entered in. You're going to go back down the hallway and, and back out through the uh, hexagonal room? Yeah. Okay. Um, so as you walk back into this room, um, you will probably notice, um, which you probably didn't catch before, there's some ropes on either one of these columns um, that kind of hang down. There's a little bit of blood at the end of them, and uh, there's not much else changing there, so you just climb back out of that room. All right, so is uh, uh, Torin uh, just chilling in that room? Yeah. Okay. Um, are you still standing at the window with your eight stealth roll? I, or do you you want me to re-roll it, but um, yeah, that, that is what the uh, crappy stealth roll would be. Did you want to wander around a little more? Because we did spend like 15 minutes on... On, uh, Tigger. I mean, she went and looked at the horse and looked around the room, but also um, went to the investigation role, so. So, yeah, you didn't fail the investigation. Yeah, that's about all you find, though. Okay. All right. Um, if you want to give me another stealth roll to make sure you hide, you can do that. Or do you want me to give one, too? Um, you, like, natted that shit, didn't you? Oh, no, you only no. got yeah, yeah, give me another one. Do I also need to make another roll? Man, I made it even worse. <laughs> I'm made a nat one, bro. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, Dr. Valerie, if you could give me a self roll as well, that'd be great. I'm sure you probably, you know, kind of wriggled yourself into the, the foliage <laughs> worse than you already were. Uh, you actually wiggled partially out of the foliage. Um, this goddamn I, shrub. I'm now doing the best, and by that I mean I'm not standing directly in the window anymore. <laughs> but I don't know. So we're just three Batmans chilling out on the f <laughs> around it. the neighborhood. Fuck, Fuck it. Fuck this shrub. The doctor stands up abruptly and just walks it walks inside with the others. Like fuck this place. I hate this whole town. I'm not. Okay, so I'm not obviously standing and staring. I'm just now casually standing in front of the window. So I will say um, that two guards come walking around. Not two guards, sorry. One guard and one gentleman come around the corner from the opening. Uh, the guy, One guy is like in the, in the cab. The other guy is kind of leading the horse. And there is a box in the back of uh, the uh, cart. Um, and both of them were actively looking for shit, and apparently they're both blind. Because I got a nat 1 and a nat 5, so, uh... You're you fucking know? shitting me. Well, there. I, I, uh, no, I'm sorry, it's a nat 6. Uh, can I screenshot this? I don't know if I can That doesn't beat any of, our, any of our shitty stealth rolls. <laughs> Holy fucking hell. For, for the doctor's just like cr just like cronk stealthing up against the wall. Oh. For the audience, uh, I rolled the best with a ten. Hayden rolled a nat one and still got a nine, and Bill rolled a seven. So that's that's what I rolled on my side. It's a nat six and a nat one. I know it looks kind of goofy, but that's that's what it is. Brilliant. <laughs> God, who are who are these two employees of the month just rolling up in here? <laughs> ain't nothing ain't nothing gonna get past us but both, both of them are completely wall-eyed looking in entirely opposite directions like staring directly at us but still can't see us it's like skyrim guard mechanics hey oh, yeah. So, yeah. i'm crouched you can't see me <laughs> literally hayden, literally of... dr valerie is walking across the street they don't see her hayden's like chasing pigeons on the ceiling and i'm just like picking at my fingernails standing directly in front of the window <laughs> And these guys do not see you. <laughs> this is great. I love when that happens. All right, so uh, they walk up to uh, in front of the uh, house across the street from the uh, across the street and down the house from this house. Y'all are uh, investigating. 
Um, and they kind of walk up to the door and they knock. Um, a gentleman opens the door, talks to them for a second, and then waves one inside. Um, the guard kind of goes back and, and pulls out a pipe and starts smoking it, standing next to the uh, the horse and buggy with them. Their horse and, horse and carriage with the, the box on the back. Did I recognize Mr. Biggs uh, among any of those people? Uh, no. None of the three. Um, if y'all each give me an investigation check real quick. Yeah, I'm going to have to go to the bathroom real quick. Okay. That's a no for me. <laughs> so, um, Bill, as you're walking across the street, if that's still what you want to do, um, <laughs> you do see uh, the guard from earlier uh, by the name of Kevin. Um, kind of peek around the corner, and let's see if he notices you. Yeah, he 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 looks right at you, and um, kind of kind of like looks back at the house and right back at you as you're walking across the 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 parking lot, or not parking lot, the the cobblestone drive. Area. God damn it! They're still doing this robbery. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Did, did did I see him see me? Uh, yeah, because he was not stealthing, and he got a uh, eight. So, on his perception check. All right, I'm well, gonna just I'm just gonna nonchalantly kind of point in general to the house the guys walk the guys walked in like that one. Uh, the. The guy kind of nods at you and, and like looks back over his shoulder. All right. And you, it's not the house that that uh, Hayden and Ron are in, right? No. Hayden's microphone is picking up a bunch of feet. All right. I'm going to look towards the front of the house where I'm sure I can see Tarun in the window. Yes, you see Tarun in the window. He's... And what's, your passive, <laughs> what's your passive perception? My passive perception is 16. Yeah, you, you totally see him in the window. I'm going to look look to her and point to the house where they just went in. And then I'm gonna walk. Does is this house also gated? Yeah, it's basically exactly the same thing. A gate here, two uh, little kind of building-looking things here, and then two little things there, and then the entryway. That's and the, the guards are posted out front, like over here. Uh, like, come on, come on. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, they're over there, so. They, they kind of pulled up right here. Um, the guy's leaning up against the back of it right here, smoking a pipe. So you could probably walk right past him because he failed in miserably. So. I'm so happy you said that because honestly, I was just going to be a smarmy asshole and say I'm just walking right past him. <laughs> he, That guy's the one that net won his perception check, so. I mean, he's he's quite literally going blind. He's an older gentleman going blind. Oh, that's that's un that's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. And I'm I'm gonna just gonna shake my head like such a shame, such a shame. As I walk as I walk right past them. Okay. Do you walk up and to? The way, by the way, Ron, you, from the window, you literally just watch uh, the doctor walk right past these two guys. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm watching. I'm not sure why. What you want me to do about you pointing at the house? But I'm watching it all. I love that y'all don't plan things. Y'all just walk right in. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go and just no plans. To be, fair, to be fair, Frank, you did say we could just knock on a door. That to is big, to the big bad of the town's house. That is more than an acceptable option to get, to, you know, talk to this guy. 
Nothing is impossible. You can knock on it, and he you could you could have had a conversation with them, and he could have gone about his day. Like that is more. You could have been like, "Hi, have you heard of our Lord and Savior Cthulhu?" And he'd been like, "Nah, I'm good," and close the door in your face. Like, <laughs> it's all a possible option. We we have no idea what our plan is. I'm walking up to the door. We kind of tried to... We, Yeah, we never did decide what our plan was, because we talked about it briefly. Briefly. We were like, we're just going to watch this house, and our plan was to follow Mr. Bix and see where he actually lives. And that's definitely was what the plan was. Oh, dear. We are... We, we are... He's absolutely precious. Between the three of us, we almost have one whole working brain cell. He seems to have already been inside. Uh, or he came in through the back door because nobody was watching the house. From that side. That's true. All right. I, I'm walking. I'm, I just walk. I'm, I'm just walking up to the door. Cause... So the information you'll have at this point is that bit, Mr. Biggs is probably home. Like somebody showed up and then went inside. That's that's about all you know. You don't even know if Mr. Biggs is here or not, to be honest. You saw a guy open the door, and the other guy go inside. There's a guy sitting outside, leaning up against the cart. <laughs> like, that's the extent of your knowledge at this point. <laughs> <laughs> that's where Dr. So Valerie comes over. I'm like, so... So he he's probably in there. Should we... What should we do? Around the house, like we need to make sure we know where he's going to go after. Is this all happening earlier? Because I'm already walking up to the door. Oh, you're walking up to Mr. Big's door. Yeah, I I walked right past the guards because they all had a shitty perception. Oh, I guess I'm going to start walking. I'm going to come outside and walk that way. If you're going straight up to his door, yeah, you're coming back to us. No, I'm walking. I'm, I, w I walked past the guards right up to where I saw them go in. After I, that's what that was my big thing. Why I was motioning over towards you. I'm like, that's the that's the house over there. That's and and I'm walking towards the house I pointed at, and I just walked right in between these two. This one blind guard and this one other guard is completely wall eyed. No, like he's doing. Guard, it was one guard and the guy that was on the cart. The guy that was on the cart went inside with the other guy that answered the door. Ah, so there's okay. only one dude outside, and he rolled in that one. So you could stand in front of him and yell at him. He probably still wouldn't notice you. <laughs> yeah, I'm just... I just walk up to the front door. To the front door. I'm like... And I don't know if anyone's... I don't know if anyone else is coming, but... I guess I'm... I, I see this, and I guess I'm gonna start walking that way, too. I mean, Hayden's in the bathroom, so... I guess we'll proactively decide on his part. All right, y'all walk up to the door. Can I knock? Uh, sure, I knock. Um, all right, so you knock. What are we doing? <laughs> all right, you knock on the door. I knock on the door. <laughs> You're knocking on the door. Knock on it. All right, um, so about 15, maybe 30 seconds pass. Um, then a stately-looking man uh, opens the door and 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 uh, looks you up and down. It says, Greetings, gentlemen. What can I do for you? Or, no, you're both ladies. Uh, gre <laughs> <laughs> uh, excuse me, I'm a lady? It's it's understandable. I, I'm wearing armor and yeah. <laughs> Don't take that shit. Unlike Don't take that shit. Unlike the movies, it's not form fitting. It it you know you can't really tell. <laughs> Try that again. All right. Yeah. Gre greetings, ladies. Uh, what can I do for you? We've got business with Mister Big. I I I apologize, uh, Mister Biggs. Uh, he he is the, uh, the busy. 
Yes, I'm aware he's busy. He's waiting for us. Is he? Uh, we've got uh, information. We've got information for him on a potential on a potential robbery happening today. Uh, he is uh, with uh, a, a a client at the moment. Well, I'm sure I'm sure he'd love to know, uh, love to know why to, uh, some good Samaritans were trying to warn him about an, uh, about a possible threat to steal directly from him and disrespect him in this town. But I guess if he doesn't care the way he the way he looks, if he looks like a little oh. weak little bitch. Oh, oh okay, madam. Let uh, please please come in and I'll uh, I'll see if I can I can pry him away from his engagement. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, so he kind of motions you inside into this main for 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 a foyer. Foyer. Thank you. Um, he motions you inside to the foyer. Um, there's probably a couple benches up against the wall here and here. Um, he would probably wouldn't offer you any refreshments um, because he is on his way to go uh, get Mr. Biggs. Of course. Mm. Um, did you want to give me a roll on that um, persuasion or intimidation? Oh, 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 I brought deception. up the wrong window. It could also be deception. Deception would also work as well. Even though you're technically referring to a true incident that might occur. All right, so you were talking, say it said perception or what else? Perception, deception, not perception, de de deception or. Persuasion or intimidation? In uh, <laughs> uh, oh crap! So deception and persuasion are both the same. Uh, okay, you know what we're gonna do? I wasn't threatening. Well, I wasn't threatening him, but at the same time, I was really laying it on thick on that one. Uh, you know what, we're going to say persuasion. Right. Oh, thank God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But but roll 20 is really messing with me with the nat one on the other side. That was a 15. All right. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, so the... Butler comes back and uh he goes um Miss, Mr Biggs uh he he cannot but <clears throat> he cannot uh, break away from his engagement uh, at the moment but uh, if you would follow me I can take you somewhere to uh, wait on him take us to him uh, I I I cannot do I cannot do this thing I I am I am the sorry, but uh, I. Why can't, I you, why can't you just take us to him? Uh, he is uh, engaged at the moment um, with a another fellow, and uh, he asked to not be disturbed. She takes a step towards him and says, "Take us to him." Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a net point on intimidation. <laughs> All right. Um, you step forward, and um, lightning like starts glowing, uh, like around, like around your eyes. Um, as you as you place it, as you place your foot down, a rumble kind of like escapes from around your foot. Um, the butler kind of falls back, and uh, he you know kind of goes pale in the face, and he's like, oh, "Okay, okay, I just I just work for him. Please don't hurt me." I won't have to if you'd hurry up and take us to him. Okay, uh, please uh, uh, f be uh, be a falling be f bleh. I'm not try to fuck. I'm trying to purposefully mess it up, and it's it's hard. Um, please be the following of me, please. And so and real, he and, and real quick, are there any childs in here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Frank. I'm done. I'm done. I promise. <laughs> I, I, that was, no. That wasn't. That wasn't in game. I'm sorry. I was just playing. <laughs> All right. So he leads you um, off to the left here, 
kind of up this direction over to here um, and points you to this area. And, and he's like, I, I am not allowed in, but please, please uh, go, go, go in, please. And just, just see if you can out of character, we still have no plan. In character, <laughs> Tarun doesn't care. And <laughs> he walks in. Um, we're walking in. All right. Might as well. We're, we've come <laughs> this far. She just walks right in. Valerie's kind words aren't working, so it's time to be forward about things. Okay, yeah, so... Hey, I'm, I'm for it. Real, real quick, like, out of character and, like, off the record. Um, what do you do to try to go and fight somebody that is overpowered um, for them at the moment? Like, I was hoping y'all would hit be at least level three with, like, four people. <laughs> um, uh, and you're, at the moment... Up, you're, time crunch, we didn't have time to get to level three. Right now, you're two people, and because, like, I'm guessing uh, Hayden's might be not coming back. And so I'm, he's. I'm he, back oh, shit. Okay. So, quick question, Hayden. Did you follow these guys inside Mr. Big's house? Because they decided to go and knock on the door and just walk the fuck inside. This is true. Hmm. So I saw them going inside. Uh, well, I mean, I flagged you guys. I flagged you guys down and and literally walked right past the guard. Yeah, we just went through the front door, and and intimidated our way right to the meeting room of Mister Bix. The house that I was inside of, or the house? No, the street. Oh. Yeah, I guess I would have followed I, like i would have gotten down and been like hey uh, i found dead bodies and like cultish stuff going on in the abandoned house though <laughs> so um as far as uh what do you do when your players go after someone who's too strong for them um i you you let them make a big mistake and uh, hope they can get out alive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was hoping there would be at least four people at level three, and now we're three people at level two. Um, I don't want to party. That's the last thing I want to do. Well, we haven't started combat yet. I know, it's just... I, I had like a whole thing planned out, and, yeah. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then three quits just completely ruined it. Yeah, three three chuckle fucks. Like, let's just do this. All right, let's go. All right. Hey, uh, hey I want to. I want to take Mister. I want to. I want to put my bag of holding on Mister. Big's head. <laughs> <laughs> it Please. is a tried and true method. And all I'm going to say is, all three of us have a bag of fucking holding. <laughs> That is, it's definitely an option. Okay, so um, I uh, I also have a well, second bag of something. You you have one bag of holding and one bag. I have a bag of holding and then a bag of holding question mark. Yeah, it's a bag. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. It's a bag that you, when you put when you put things in, you can't take them back out. You just they're not there anymore. Well, it's kind of like a bag of holding, but more like a bag of. Well, when you put things in, they seem to reappear back where I took them from. Basically, yeah. Except for what was it? Garbage? No, it even did garbage too. It, it's a very weird. I mean, unless, unless someone stops me, I'm. I'm gonna walk. I mean, we're here. I'm gonna walk in. I, we were, we were in. This is what we wanted. We, we, we asked them to take us to the place. We're going in. Okay. Um. So to y'all. Be fair, to be fair, Hayden, and, Hayden in session zero did fight, did fight a, a, uh, mm -hmm. a, you know, an anarch to a god. So, sorry, an <laughs> apostle to a god. So, I mean, <laughs> no. 
Hayden ran away on session zero with a few uh, encounters with them. Bill, you you and Ron are the ones that tried to fight a basically a god on session yeah, like, like <laughs> yeah, or like the archon to a god or something like that. Hell, I've still got, I've still got the I've still got his feather knives. Hop in mine now. The, ar- the archon to the Raven Queen. So, I mean, this is this is this is good. This, this is good. This this is this is good. All right, let's just roll with so it. If we die, we die. Do you stack up and go through the door? Are y'all still carrying around the unconscious dwarf? Will you survive? Find out next week on. <laughs> oh, did y'all want to cut it right here? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, it's getting late for me. Yeah, yeah. That that yeah. Way you can figure out what the heck you're gonna do. <laughs> yeah, I fully, I fully, I fully respect the fact that you might need to, that you might need to uh, do some uh, <clears throat> little management there. Yeah, I either need to. It's bump okay. It. It's okay if anyone goes down. I am a healer. So, so, rogue. So here's one trick with with powerful villains. It, mm-hmm. um, villains, you know, they usually don't want to fight. They want to run away. Just give them an escape ability. Um, let let well, you know, he, wipe the floor with us for a little bit, and then escape if that's in, ends up what happens. You know, but uh, so kind of like with, that with Mister Biggs. Um, he's not like a super big bad, like he's he's your like big bad of a side quest type of guy. Like he's only a slight challenge rating above what I, I should have been for like four level threes. Um, so not like super hard, you know, pretty easy knockout. Three people at a level below, um, it's gonna be kind of hard. And the fact that y'all came at this the way y'all did, there's two other enemies that would have or should enter combat along with Mr. Biggs. Um, and both of them are overpowered. One of which, extremely so. Um, and I was hoping you wouldn't take this for so honestly. I thought y'all might try to communicate. Like, y'all could have checked the house for clues we or might, documents. We, we, you know, we're just walking in. That doesn't mean it's immediately going to turn into combat. We, we, you know, work. Yeah, we're just... You've intimidated the butler to get him to take you to Mr. Biggs. Yeah, yeah we've got we've got information and he might want. The next step is to intimidate Mr. Biggs into letting my friend go. If he does it, then I don't have to fight him. <clears throat> okay, so... And if he doesn't, then we oh. just kill him. Ron, for your character, if you remember right, um, once Bad guy. Mr. Biggs, once Mr. Biggs found out that you were a slave or you were enslaved to at the um, the Coliseum, he was like, "Hold on, I will go get help for you," and then ran off looking for quote unquote guards. Yeah, uh, and then he arrested my friend. So, well, no, no, your friend was already in custody. At that point, he had walked off to go find his dad and, and try to get help for you and him. Um, at that point, his dad was already dead, and uh, like he wasn't going to get like help. He was going to get his cronies to try to recapture you. I mean, so but he already, he already he already knows your face. I don't necessarily know that's why he ran off because I just assumed he was terrified like out of character the way you described it and therefore that's how Tarun would have perceived it was he seemed scared of me well not not so much no. scared it was, it was supposed to appear like he was um upset and maybe slightly frightened but not necessarily of you but of uh, something yeah I mean that's how it's supposed to go Tarun's got eight intelligence. You know, the dude ran off f- scared and upset. She probably assumed it was because of something she did. Yeah. Probably. Guys, 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 all I'm saying is it's okay. I have a plus one to intelligence. I think I've got this. <laughs> I have an eight charisma, so don't, don't, you know, I, I didn't take any skills except intimidation, but I do have an 18 charisma. I might be able to talk my way out. 
this. <laughs> well, Mr. Biggs wanted to recapture you for some reason. Or capture, sorry, capture you for some reason. Not recapture. <laughs> um, and so he knows your face. And that was already one of his plans, was to find you and recapture you. Um, as far as... Happy to see me, then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so he's he you know doesn't really care so much about Tigger, even though Tigger stole a lot of his shit. He doesn't know who took it yet. Um, he's yeah. actually investigating. <clears throat> and the little shit that threw the, the rocks at one of you guys... Um, at this point in the story, would have already told the guy that he has investigating that it was you three. So, that mind you, he doesn't know yet. But, uh, yeah. Someone's, get, someone's getting an ass whooping when I get back to that town square. Of course you don't know this, because this if it is comes happening. Down to, if it comes down to combat, I mean, I wasted my two HP healing ability, but I've got all of my big, big damage abilities still, so... I can feel some and, to run. <laughs> and even even without magic spells, I do have a magic a magic weapon that lets me steal and readminister health. So that is true. But uh, we might be we might be okay. Plus, with the agility of one rogue, the agility of another rogue, and the powerhouse that is Tarun, who I'm assuming has magic. I don't have spells and, yet, but I have. I have one charge of an ability that lets me do maximum damage with a lightning ability, and then I have my my thunderous rebuke, which I can use four times a day, and one of those times I can do max damage with it. Hey, any any one of the rebuke spells I think is like one of the it's like a serious powerhouse. I'm just saying. Yeah, so I can I can one off a bunch. I well a bunch twelve damage, I guess, because it's just two d 6 right now, but assuming it hits, I have a big one-off, and I can use that thing four times at the regular dance. So so I've, I've got some, like, stuff I can waste if we have to run to, to distract him. Now, is it is it 2d... Is it so, so is it 12 with the 2d6, or do you get a, a modifier on top of that? It's, it isn't just twelve straight damage. It's just it would be just be twelve straight straight damage in this case. They make a dex save, take two d six damage. Yeah, it's honestly not as good as like. Wait, shouldn't that have? Nope, it doesn't have the knockdown ability like a spell that's similar to that. I don't know. I mean, I can I can throw some. I I can. I've got high HP. Like I mean. Tarun will stand and distract if the others need to run until she is able to run herself. That, you know, she's the tank. That's her job. Yeah. Hey, guys, I, I gotta go. You. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do guys. outro real quick. What was that? You want to stick around for the outro real quick? Sure. Alright. Alright, so this has been another episode of uh, Fuck. The Realms of Rothgar. <laughs> <laughs> brought to you by uh, Integrated Dice Management. Am I saying that right? Yes. Yes. I, I think I said Dungeon Management last time. I don't know if it's Fine. Dungeon or Dice. Either way. Both. Uh, brought to you by Integrated Dungeon slash Dice Management. I have been your storyteller slash GM for the evening. Um, you can find me in my bed shortly uh, and probably on social media uh, with me tonight I had uh, Ron I am Ron and you can also find me you can find me on Twitter that I never access at Brilliant and I've got Aiden you can find me deep in the heart of Texas <laughs> That must be Hayden. Yeah, my I'm Hayden. Uh, I play Tigger. I don't really have social medias, so. And lastly, that that was it. We that's all that we had. Bye, Bill. Oh yeah, we also had a Bill. Jesus.
Yeah, I'm just fucking just fuck this day, fuck these Trumps, fuck all of y'all. I'm, I'm Bill. I was <laughs> Dr. Valerie Andrews. You can find me at, on Twitter at Bill's above. God damn it. <laughs> Is that true? Uh, you have a Twitter? I have a yeah, Twitter. Yeah, I'm surprised there too. <laughs> it's Bill's above? No, just Bill's above. Bill's above. That's good. Yep, with a Z. That's pretty good. I like that. Uh, my thumbnail looks like a goblin with a big wrench. Uh, yeah, I mean, it makes sense for uh, Slurm. All right. Yeah. Uh, that, yep, that, that's it. Uh, good night, everybody. Bye. Or yeah. good afternoon or good evening. Whatever. Laters. Bye. Hey. Uh, good, good morning. Wait, no, what does he say? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. That thing. Wait, he says, first, in case I don't see it. Yeah. <laughs> God, we are seriously just four chuckle fucks that almost had a whole green cell. <laughs> we are four chuckle fucks. Are y'all carrying around the dwarf? Because I, I made that joke earlier, and I don't know if we're actually doing that. Sure, that's hey, that's Jaden, right? Yeah. yeah. You, oh yeah, we're car oh you're carrying him. He's he's way, just he's just knocked out. Yeah, that way if he wakes that way if he comes back, we've got party member number four. <laughs> we're accepting of we're accepting of his of his unfortunate of his unfortunate medical condition. I am still recording this because it's just cold. Oh you yeah. Later y'all. Later. Yeah, because, like, I just, I did not expect <laughs> to approach this we have. I mean, it, it, overall, I mean, it gives me a good, like, point of reference, I guess. To, yeah. Uh, considering this is, you know, in actuality, my first time DMing, <clears throat> what to expect out of some chuckle fucks like us? Um, well, I, I mean, let's let's be honest let's, here. Best case scenario, best case scenario, we bag of we bag of holding him and cheese it. I mean, you do have quite a few bag of holdings, so you are more capable of just burning one and running. I think you know, fine. 